Greetings from Tokyo, Japan on this March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, uh, about a week now after the initial earthquake um, that has devastated the northeastern region of uh, Japan. Now, I'm going to give you as much information as I can from my perspective here in Tokyo and from my experience living here for the last 10 years, some of which may, may not jive with what you've been hearing, uh, but trust me, uh, I think I know what I'm talking about. Uh, but again, if you disagree, feel free to express that in the comment section. Uh, I'm going to update on three main things. One, the status of Tokyo currently. Uh, two, uh, my impression of how this disaster is being reported, particularly by Western media. And three, what is really happening, uh, actually happening um, here in Japan. First, uh, the status of Tokyo. Tokyo is fine. I am fine. Cannot repeat this enough. Um, Given the reports that I've been seeing coming out of the West, you would think that uh, it was all hell and pandemonium, but it's really not. Tokyo is totally fine. There was minimal structural damage in the initial earthquake, and really very few other issues uh, have been coming up beyond that, other than um, unnecessary panic. Uh, if you look at this photo, you'll see what I had for lunch the other day. Uh, tacos. Tacos and a uh, pina colada. Uh, after that, I went and had some lovely pastries. Yes, the pastry levels seem to be uh, running low, but we are not in any sort of emergency situation regarding pastries. I, I point this out because um, everyone and their grandma is emailing me and calling me from outside of the country saying, you've got to get out, run through the hills, the world is ending, oh my god, the sky is falling. And it's really not here in Tokyo. The true disaster is up in northeastern Japan, and again, I'll get to that in the third part of this video. Uh, when initial reports came out, uh, came out about the nuclear reactor, there was some, uh, what they're calling, panic shopping. Uh, and this definitely was the case. In the first few days, uh, people were basically going and just cleaning out the stores uh, by paying for things, not looting. There's been almost zero cases of crime or looting since the earthquake. Uh, if anything, I've had neighbors stopping by to make sure I have enough of everything. Um, so, yeah, I, I've seen nothing uh, in that regard. Uh, everyone here has been respectful, kind, cooperative, uh, and basically doing what they need to do. Um, going to the supermarket, I've been going every day to the supermarket just to check the status of it. This is how the supermarkets look today. Uh, there's plenty of food. In fact, really what's happened is everyone realized they had bought way too much stuff in the first few days after the uh, earthquake, and now uh, people are trying to <laughs> eat some of their very full refrigerators. As a result, um, the supermarket was really not crowded whatsoever today. Uh, in um, where I live, and all the shelves were really basically restocked. Uh, there's a few things that have been hard to get, like milk and bread especially. Um, but again, these are comfort things. I mean, I can drink my coffee black. I don't need to have, you know, milk. Uh, it's really not such a huge issue. Mmm. Yummy coffee. Now, um, Everything else has been pretty much back to normal. Uh, I was getting, you know, unnecessary junk mail for like delivery restaurants the day after the earthquake in my mailbox. Um, the most uh, upsetting thing uh, about this so far has been, uh, for me, the way it's being perceived in the West uh, in terms of how dire the situation is. And I'm going to try and go through uh, a quick explanation of why. The best example I can give you uh, is one I, I found today. Uh, from the uh, Daily News, which is already pretty much a rag of a newspaper, but this was uh, their, their headline. Panic! Panic! And it, it, with an exclamation point, it's almost as though they're saying it like a command. It's like in the imperative form. Panic! You must panic so you have a reason to buy our crappy newspaper. Uh, the same thing's been happening with a lot of news networks, uh, not to name names, but CNN, Fox, I mean, almost everywhere. Even Al Jazeera, which was doing a fairly fair job of covering it, is now falling into this sort of uh, ratings game thing. They're getting huge ratings on the, the news networks and as a result uh, they almost have a vested interest in this continuing to be a disastrous situation for those here. And it is disastrous in the Northeast but in Tokyo where approximately a quarter of the Japanese population lives it is not such a bad situation right now. Most of this comes from what I would call a grotesque lack of understanding of Japan and uh, Japanese culture. Um, I had hoped things would get better when uh, you know, maybe Anderson Cooper and Sanjay Gupta finally arrived, or as I'm calling uh, these two, uh, the Coop and the Goop. Uh, I hoped when they showed up, like things would maybe calm down a little, when they had actually had like, people on the ground. But uh, quite the contrary, now 
uh, they're actually like doing an even worse job if that's possible because they're focusing on these human interest stories and like you know elderly people crying in front of rubble and things like that that make the situation seem so much more horrible than it is. But again, here in Tokyo, which by the way is where most of these uh, reporters are, uh, it's really fine. Um, you know, another big thing here has been a lack of understanding. I mean, um, recently Fox News had an infographic showing um, Shibuya Eggman, uh, which is a uh, live house, a, a sort of concert hall in Shibuya, like a, a discotheque, I guess if you were calling it, um, in Shibuya uh, to be a nuclear reactor. I don't know who screwed up the Google search on that one, but no, there is no nuclear reactor named Eggman in Shibuya. Um, I mean, to, to foreign governments as well who have been evacuating people, there's been a lot of misunderstanding about that. I've been getting some emails from people saying, like, well, the government said that you should evacuate. Um, that must mean you need to get out. So they wouldn't say that unless you had to. No, they would absolutely say that because the U.S. government, amongst many other governments, uh, the French uh, in particular, are getting pressure from relatives and family of people who are in Japan saying, what are you doing about this? What are you doing about this? So what, what are they going to do? They're going to say, well, we recommend everyone gets out. That way they can cover their own asses in case something, you know, God forbid, does happen. Uh, they can say, well, we told them. We told them to get out. You know, they're, they're saying get out because there's nothing else they can actually do. Um, this, this disaster in Japan has been mutated into once again, and I'm American. I love my country. I will always be an American. I identify first and foremost with the United States of America as a citizen of that country. But um, once again, this is becoming, uh, as America so often does, um, somehow about them, about the U.S. And this is really not about the U.S., all right? I don't really give a crap what the U.S. government thinks about this situation or what uh, American news media thinks because uh, they are far removed from the situation. Uh, to people in the U.S. who are listening to Western media, like, you know, CNN and such, please stop. Please stop panicking, for God's sakes. I mean, uh, I've been hearing about people on the West Coast of the U.S. buying up all these, like, anti-radiation meds. You know what? Those meds might actually be useful to people within a 30-mile radius of the plant. But to you in California, Alaska, British Columbia, wherever, you really don't need them. It's almost comical. It would, be, it would be comical if it wasn't so sad. And in fact, those meds would be better off being sent to the afflicted areas, not hoarded by people in the U.S. who really don't and will not need them. Uh, nuclear power is a very political issue. It's a very highly sensitive political issue for some people. I think to most people before this incident, it really didn't register on the radar of, you know, hot-button political topics, things like, you know, abortion or, you know, whatever. But, I mean, nuclear power for many people is a very sensitive issue. Uh, as a result, uh, especially from what I've been seeing from American news sources, the Japanese disaster has been nearly forgotten and become a sort of political football so that people who are in the like, sort of anti-nuclear power camp are using this uh, to say, well, we can't build any more nuclear power plants. We have to shut down all nuclear power plants, take out all well, nuclear power plant permits. Uh, and... They almost want this to be as big a disaster as possible subconsciously because it proves their point that nuclear power is not safe. On the other side of it, um, you have people who are pro-nuclear power trying to downplay it as much as possible so that this does not put a huge dent in it. And to think that that's not affecting the way this is being reported when you consider that GE and many other companies own a lot of these news networks um, you know, and various political like uh, factions, you know, support different news networks, uh, you've got your head in the sand. So anyone who thinks that that information uh, you're getting from Western media is, is on the mark, you're insane. But that's the stuff that's getting quoted to me. And often it's usually like a, a day late and completely off the mark, uh, including factual errors and whatnot. I mean, going back to the uh, Daily News picture I showed earlier, let's just look at this for a second. The, the first thing they say up there is... Um, Panic, of course, and that's in no way helpful to anyone. Let's go down to the uh, bullet points here. The workers are uh, stopping the, the process. That did not happen, uh, but somehow it's being reported. It was reported briefly, but then it was uh, later proven to be an incorrect uh, report. They had just taken cover for a short period, then immediately went back to work. Uh, the heroic efforts of those people uh, should really be recognized uh, working to get this nuclear power plant situation under control. Um, yet, here it is bullet pointed on the Daily News. Second, uh, 140,000 people um, 
take cover indoors. Duh, yeah, I mean, that, that's an obvious, obvious thing to do. Uh, they should be taking cover indoors because, you know, there could be some radiation in the air. And third, uh, that uh, panic on the West Coast, um, people buying, you know, medicines, anti-radiation meds. You know what? Um, the reason they're doing that is because people like the Daily News are putting up BS info. And there's no scientific need for, or medical need for anyone on the West Coast of the U.S. or really anywhere outside Japan to be taking radiation meds. In fact, the radiation meds are more dangerous than any possible amount of radiation that might ever reach as far as the west coast of the U.S. So again, all of this is total, total BS. Uh, I have one message to Western media and to foreign governments who are inserting themselves into this, uh, and that is, stop it. You're hurting us. You are freaking out people here needlessly. You're giving my mom a stroke, and you are reporting things that are not the case uh, as well as really hampering the efforts to get aid into the places that are actually affected. Which brings me to point three, what's really going on, okay? And now this uh, may be sort of debate because maybe you heard from somebody or somebody said on some channel that something, because um, uh, trust me, I've been getting a number of those emails, all of which uh, have been you know, disproven. Uh, What's really going on is uh, there is incredibly low temperatures around the area where uh, the disaster really hit the hardest. Somewhere over 5,000 people are officially uh, dead, confirmed dead, another 10,000 at least uh, missing, unaccounted for, and close to a half million people are living in evacuation centers. Evacuation centers that are running precariously low on food, water, uh, gasoline, and the government is doing the best they can to get those supplies to those people. That is the real crisis going on right now. What's going on at the nuclear power plant is scary, yes, but it's not really um, a danger. Within the 20 to 30 kilometer radius of the nuclear power plant, plant yes, uh, radiation levels are quite high. In Tokyo, currently, and again, this could all change, currently, radiation levels are at or below what they are normally for background radiation levels. And in the places where they are slightly higher, you, you would get more radiation getting in an airplane to go to from like Tokyo to New York than you'd get from being here, okay? Um, so the, actually the people who are flying out of Tokyo to get back to their hometowns uh, in, in foreign lands are probably going to experience more radiation on the airplane trip home than we're going to experience here in, in Tokyo. So one quick story I want to end with, because um, this has been kind of a heavy and somewhat angry video. <laughs> Apologies for that. Um, I was walking back from the supermarket yesterday evening uh, with a bag full of groceries and along the way I found a, a chalk arrow drawn on the ground. I was like, oh, that's odd. Went a little bit further and then I found the words uh, beer near written on the ground and another chalk arrow. And I thought, well, you know what? I have to follow these arrows. And, and it did occur to me that this might be some kind of, you know, elaborate trap. I felt a little bit like, a, you know, wildy coyote. Uh, or, you know, some other cartoon following these arrows. But eventually I followed them, and they led back to the train station where I found a group of people, maybe like 15 or 20 people, uh, all hanging out, maybe half of them foreigners from various countries, half of them uh, Japanese people. And it turns out uh, they're all hanging out, having a beer, and they were the hash, they were hashers. Uh, hashers is a kind of expat thing that, that goes on in different parts of Asia. It started quite a long time ago. What it is, is basically someone goes out with chalk and marks a trail in a different neighborhood every week. Uh, they go to a different neighborhood and they, they make a sort of trail on the ground and they have a starting point. Uh, and then basically everyone but like two or three people hang out uh, and watch their stuff. The other people go on a sort of fun run, like a five to ten kilometer race following this trail uh, through the urban environment until they eventually make it back to the starting point. Uh, where they hang out and have uh, a couple beers and chat, and uh, that's what was going on. And so I, I stood there for a while and chatted with the people who were doing it, and uh, somewhat, you know, awestruck, this one uh, fellow who was uh, one of the organizers, has been here for about 25 years, I asked him, like, well, you know, it's so much stuff going on. This is good for stress relief, but seriously, I mean, why, why, are, you guys, why are you guys doing this with everything that's going on right now? And he kind of looked at me quizzically and said, well... Wednesday. We always do this on Wednesday. <laughs> I thought that was pretty much the best explanation for 
the state of Tokyo right now. Uh, it's a hard city to get down. And uh, despite everything, uh, panic in the news, the city is really rolling along uh, with the stiff upper lip. And, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Uh, so for those of you out there who are worried, um, don't. Especially not about us down here in Tokyo. Uh, people to worry about are up north. Uh, and I hope you'll keep that in mind. Uh, and also when, it takes, uh, when it's time to reach into the pocket, I hope you keep that in mind too. Um, that's it for me. Uh, I strongly suggest if you want to stay abreast of the news, uh, you follow um, NHK World, uh, which is viewable through any number of platforms. I recommend uh, JIBTV.com. Uh, so please check out uh, NHK World on JIBTV.com. Again, I'll put links to all the pertinent information that I recommend you read and check up on uh, in the notes below. Um, again, um, my best wishes to all of you out there in Japan, wherever you may be, and hopes for a quick recovery from this disaster, and that uh, people outside of Japan uh, hold on to your, to your wits. Uh, do not get sucked into all the hype. It's not going to be as bad as you think, or as <sighs> certain people would have you believe. All right. Uh, happy St. Patrick's Day to all. Uh, Kuni out.